Hey everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the launch function and highlight some improvements that have been made to it recently. I'll show you ways to incorporate this into your apps and what the benefits of it are. But first, here's the intro. If you've happened to watch my launch mobile apps from Power Apps video, then you're familiar with the launch function already. In that video, I showed a very basic use of the launch function to go and open up another URL. Now, you might be familiar with the navigate function in Power Apps. So we can take a button, for example, like this home button, and we can use the navigate function to move to another screen within our Power App. The launch function, on the other hand, lets you launch an external URL. Now there have been a few recent improvements to the launch function since I've made a video about it, so I want to highlight those in this video. In this particular app I have, it's a training app, and I want to create a training portal based on Power Apps for my users so that they can see and consume different trainings that are either video-based, or in this case for the Power Apps training template, it will link out to the Power Apps training app. Now, since we have all these links to YouTube videos and external URLs, we're going to need to use the launch function for this. Now, let's look at this discover gallery I have. With this gallery, I want to link out to YouTube videos that I have. The back end of this is just a SharePoint list with a URL field where I put in the YouTube video URL. When they click on one of these boxes, I want it to link out so that they can go to YouTube and watch the video. So what I can do is click on the gallery, go to the properties pane, and go to the on select property of the gallery. So when any of these gallery items are selected, I can put in a formula here to make it open up that YouTube video. For this, we'll want to use that launch function to open an external URL. So if we just start typing launch in here, you'll see that it's expecting an address to put in. Now we can either hard code in an address to something, close it out, and it would accept it just as is. Or we can link out to something stored within the gallery item. So in this case, I have a URL field for video URL. So I'm going to use that in my launch command. Now we could leave it at that and it would open up the video URL. So if we just play this real quick, click on one of these items in the gallery, you'll see that it opens up to the YouTube video in a new tab. Now that's great, but what if we don't want it to open up in a new tab and we'd rather it replace the current application? Now you might not want to do this for something like opening up a YouTube video. It might be the best experience to be able to keep the app open and then have the YouTube video opened in a new tab. But where this comes in handy, being able to replace the current window is if you're wanting to launch another Power App. So in one of my talks about building beautiful Power Apps, I mentioned breaking out your apps into multiple apps so that they don't get too huge. And you'll see that a lot of people are actually doing that. So you might have one app that's kind of like a launcher application to launch off into different other applications. Well, in that scenario, being able to open up those other Power Apps that you're launching in the same tab would be really beneficial to make it seem more like one holistic application. So in my case, if we look at this, my task gallery, this Power Apps training template is actually another Power App. So for that, I'd rather it open up in the same tab. So if we go to this gallery and look at the launch command here, you'll see in the launch command that we have additional properties that we can configure. So I'm passing in a URL, which in this case is the details link, but now you'll see here we have a new property we can configure called launch target. So this will let us define either to open it up in a new tab or replace the current tab. So to configure this, you just have to type launch target. And if you do a dot, you'll see we have those two options. So you can either choose blank or self. Now the default's still going to be blank. So if you leave this and don't fill out this property, like we did just a minute ago, it's going to open up at a new tab, but you can overwrite that and do a launch target dot self, and that will force it to open up in the existing tab. Now, another thing I'll point out here, you'll notice that before this launch target, I have two squiggly brackets. Now, why is that? Well, there's another property that we need to configure in here if we want to use the launch target, and that's a parameters property. So if you watch one of my other videos about passing parameters to your Power Apps, you know that you can manipulate this URL for your Power App and add in query strings by like typing in a question mark and 
you know, uh, ID equals something like that. And you can read that query string with the param function. So you could manually pass those in uh, using the URL and just appending that to your URL. But Microsoft tried to make that a little bit easier for us by giving us this parameters property that we can configure directly in our launch command. So what you can do is type in two squiggly brackets and map out the parameters that you'd like to pass. So I can pass a parameter called screen and give it a value in quotes like browse. So maybe I want to go directly to a browse screen. So this parameter will actually get appended to our URL when we launch the application now. Now if you want to use the launch target, it's going to expect something in the parameters. So just put two empty squiggly brackets, a beginning and a close there, so that you can put, fill in that launch target. Now let's just save this and we'll publish it so that we can test it out and see if that opens up in the same tab. Another quick tip here, when you're testing your applications, if you haven't experienced this yet, um, Power Apps likes to cache your apps. So to make sure, rather than racking your brain like, why didn't this work? To make sure that you have the updated version of your application, just put a simple label in somewhere on your application. So in my case here, I have it in the bottom left-hand corner with the version number. So each time you make a change, add to that version number, keep track of it, and then you'll know that if it still says uh, V1 on here when I open this up, I know that I have an incorrect version and doesn't have my updates so I need to keep refreshing. So that's published. Now I'm gonna go back and open up the application like I'm using it. Now, if I click here on this Power Apps training template, it should replace my current tab because we use the self function. Great, so you see how I was in the same current tab. Now it opened up the Power Apps training app and also it passed in the parameter we defined into our URL. So if we needed to, we can expand on that and use the param function in this application to read the screen and do something. I have videos out there already that talk about utilizing this param function in your app, so I'll just put a link to that in the video notes so you can reference that and see how you could use that function as well. And those were the main new features of the launch function that I wanted to show you today. Again, if you are launching another power app, most likely you'll want to use the self command. If you're launching something else like a, a YouTube video or um, a SharePoint site, something that takes you away from Power Apps, you probably want to stick to the blank launch target so that it opens up in a new tab still. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like it, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.